Texas took the lead on this one. It spread like wildfire. So you're seeing them in Pennsylvania. You're seeing them in Kansas. You're seeing them in Wisconsin. You're seeing them in Ohio. Nine more states are enforcing new laws requiring eligible voters to present a government-issued photo ID at the polls. Overwhelming majority of Americans, regardless of their political views and regardless of their race or ethnicity, support voter ID laws. This is not Jim Crow. This is not a police dog. This is not a fire hose. When you restrict access to the right to vote by creating a narrow set of IDs that can be used, it's creating blocks to people being able to participate. They try to make it seem rational and facially neutral, racially neutral, but it's not. We had voters who were born in the Jim Crow South who had no birth certificates because white hospitals would not allow them to give birth in their facilities. I had my social security card, my to-go pass, I had my United Healthcare, I had my red, white, and blue card, and I had my Ford card. And that still wasn't enough to vote. About 21 million Americans don't have strict forms of government-issued ID. That works out to about 10% of the electorate. You, know, you look at Texas, if you have a state-issued photo ID that says you're allowed to carry a concealed weapon, that's sufficient to allow you to vote. If, however, you have a state-issued photo ID that says you're a student at the University of Texas, that's insufficient. Young people in America, they could have the most power of any electoral bloc in the country. If you take out one or two campuses, you can swing an election. And so that's exactly what New Hampshire Republicans decided to do. Studies will show that if you can get young adults to vote between the ages of 18 to 24, they're more likely to vote going further into their adulthood. Once you strip someone their access of being able to vote, it takes away their role within our democracy. Voter suppression is often targeted communities that are seen as non-normative. We saw this come into sharp relief in North Dakota, where a law that required a residential address on driver's licenses seemed benign. But the reality was that for those communities, getting a residential address on a reservation required that the state or local government grant that to you, and it didn't happen. A majority of Indian country does not have physical addresses. They use post office boxes. It became very evident that the law was created to suppress the Native American vote. The only way to get recognition is to vote. And that's what it is matter of survival. In Wisconsin, they put a new voter ID law in effect in the run-up to the 2016 election. A lot of Republicans since 1984 in the presidential races have not been able to win in Wisconsin. Why would it be any different for a Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump? Well, I think Hillary Clinton is about the weakest candidate the Democrats have ever put up. And now we have photo ID, and I think photo ID is going to make a little bit of a difference as well. Up to 23,000 people were blocked or deterred from voting. And Donald Trump only won the state of Wisconsin by just over 22,000 votes. So this one restriction in Wisconsin alone had a huge impact on Donald Trump becoming the next president of the United States. Ohio has become, sadly, the leader in creating certain types of uh, voter suppression that other states have followed. And there's no bigger example of that than purging.
there is certainly need to update your voting rolls. People pass away, people move. There also are some states that are really smart about this, things like automatic voter registration. But Ohio does the exact opposite. Ohio's had a purging process where if you don't vote in several elections and you don't respond to a postcard, you're knocked off the rolls. When it comes to the right to vote, Ohio is a use it or lose it state. In a split five to four decision, the Supreme Court ruled that in Ohio, you can be dropped from the voter rolls if you do not vote for about six years and do not respond to a card the state sends you in the mail. They send you a postcard to your house. It really does look like a piece of junk mail. If you don't send it back, they assume you're not there. Then they purge you from the roll. They say, oh, this person didn't send it back. We're gonna drop them. 